Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Hamburg. But before we do, we just want to remind you to make sure to subscribe to us so you can see our videos as they come out. We have a lot of fun stuff coming out and you don't want to miss it. Okay, Hamburg is designed by Stefan Feld and it is published by Queen Games. All right, we are huge Stefan Feld fans. Uh, one of our first favorite designers. We basically tried to buy, we tried to collect every Feld game we could have for a while. Well, one of the games that we tried to collect was a game called Bruges. Bruges is such a fantastic game. This is, um, when people kind of do their rankings of Feld games, or just games in general, Bruges gets brought up. This is a fantastic kind of older school Euro game. Very, very smooth, very fast, very balanced, very fun. The problem... Oh, we're going to have to re-rank our Feld games. We are. Well, stay tuned, you guys, for more announcements about that. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, uh, Hamburg is a re-implementation of Bruges. So there's going to be a lot of similarities, a lot of things that, if you've played Bruges, are going to look familiar and seem familiar. But at the same time, there's some tweaks and upgrades and things that make it a little bit smoother and a little bit better. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of how to play, uh, what's kind of going on in this game, and then we'll go back to the review. All right, so there is kind of a lot going on in this game, so I want to break this down by parts. So the first thing you're going to see is this selection of cards. You have five different colors of cards, and also some tokens over here. The cards are what drives this entire game, and the cards can do a lot of different things. Just by based off the color of the cards, you can do certain actions. By discarding certain cards, you can you know, get more meeples or more workers, or you can do certain actions like build foundations and build buildings, that kind of things. But when you actually build the cards, let me show you what those look like. All right, so we've got things like this. This is a zoo. This is basically just paying the victory point, paying the cost over here in order to get those victory points over here. We have things like parks, same thing. Uh, this is going to be the cost over here. This is the victory points. But this is going to say you have a kind of ability. This one says every uh, phase one of the game, you're going to be able to take a coin. All right, so from here on out, these are all buildings. Buildings require foundations. You have to basically pay a different card earlier in order to pay a foundation, so that you have a foundation to build these buildings on. This one again, once again, there's a cost, there's victory points, and this is a benefit. In this case, this is an end of game benefit. For every one of these symbols you see on one of your cards, you're gonna get two points at the end of the game. Things like that. This is an immediate benefit. This one says, whenever you build a house, or sorry, for every house you have built, you're gonna get take two coins. So that's fantastic. This is an ongoing ability. This one says for every one of those lightning abilities, you can do it twice. So if you had this one built ahead of time, and then you played this card, you'd take two, four coins for every house you have built, or for every building you have built. All right, and this is an activation thing. That's what these tokens over here are for. You basically have this little stash of tokens. This is going to be basically a way that you can notify that you've already spent that action this turn. This particular one says, uh, during the, the third phase, you can choose to discard a pink worker in order to do, if you have three pink foundations, or uh, sites they call them, you're going to be able to take two victory points, as many times as you have. So, that's the way the buildings work. The parks and the zoos, you do not require a site for or a foundation for. Everything else you do. Here is the main board. This is going to be the large board that's in the center of the table. Not a lot of actual actions happen here, but kind of a lot of storage takes place here, as well as kind of the upkeeping and the round track and things like that. So at the beginning of every round, what we're going to do is we're going to roll these six dice over here. This is going to determine the strength of each one of those colors. It's going to do a few other things as well. First of all, uh, if everything that's either a one or a two, like here we have a one or a two, and whatever that total is, that's going to be the price it takes to move your guy along the track over here. This is basically another way to get victory points. So for every time you're able to move this guy up, you get the victory points associated on the side over here. And the cost is going to be based off of how many ones and twos have enrolled over here. You also want to take a look out for fives and sixes. For every five and six over here, that's kind of bad. It's actually going to be causing a calamity on your personal player board, which I'll show you that in a little bit. So you're going to want to watch out for those. Over here we have all different storage of all the different colored meeples. There's our bank with our coins. Uh, this is where those calamities are going to happen there if you have one of the black calamities. We also have some rewards over here for being able to build your walls. Um, there's the walls themselves over here. I'll kind of show you that on the personal player board again in a minute. We've got some spots that are completely dedicated to expansions. There comes with six expansions. One over there, one over there. There's a few more on the board as well. I'm not going to really touch on those, but adding those expansions is cool and it does felt the board a little more as well. And this section over here is kind of all about tracking the round. There's eight rounds in this game, and each round is going to have four turns. So you have four little clock towers over there. You're going to count those down every time you take an action. And then also, based off whatever the black die was rolled over here, you're going to take one of these little meeple clerics, and you're going to move it to that number. So, for instance, we've got a four. We put this over here on the four. Not only does that track the rounds as the meeples run out, you know that the game is ending, but also at the end of the game, you're going to get bonuses based off what color these meeples are at. So, for instance, once this moves down at the end of the round, all the pink buildings at the end of the game are going to be worth one extra point. 
Here is our personal player board. Everything's kind of set up over here. You have all your different workers on their different camps. This is where all the calamities are going to take place. So we were talking about that earlier. When a calamity takes place, based off of whatever number is a 5 or a 6, you have to move one of these sliders over. So let's say we rolled a 5 on orange. We would slide one of those over. If ever the entire row is slid over, now a calamity is taking place. In this case, the orange says you have to burn down one of your buildings that you've built, which is terrible. Some of them require you to discard money or meeples. Basically, all of the calamities are bad, but you do have a way to get rid of them. One of the actions that you can take on your turn is you can discard a card matching a certain calamity. So let's say we wanted to, let's say we were here. We can discard an orange card in order to move the orange calamity back one, and you'd also get one victory point as well. There's five tokens over here on the side of the board. Those all have to do with being the majority of something. You have to be in the first place in certain categories in order to be able to flip those over. Uh, so this one says over here, if you are the person who in the middle track on the main board is the furthest ahead, you're gonna be able to flip that over. It's worth four victory points. All of them are worth four victory points. And if you ever lose that status, you still get to keep it flipped over. So let's say the very first round, you get to, out to an early start, you're way out there ahead of everybody else, you get to flip that over. On a future round, someone else beats you. They can flip theirs over, but yours stays over as well. There's bonuses for points, for buildings, for zoos, and for building your wall. Every player's also gonna get some handy player aids over here. This one walks you through the different phases of the game. So first you're gonna refresh your hand, activate any uh, parts that you might have. Then you're gonna roll a dice, do the priests, do the calamities, do go up on the track. Then we're getting to the third phase, which is actually where your actions take place. Then you do your actions, and then there's kind of some cleanup phases at the end there. You also have a aid that tells you all the different actions that you can take. How you gather meeples, how you gather coins, how you can fix calamities. It shows you how to build walls. Uh, and this is also how you're going to build your, your sites or your foundations. And how to build buildings as well. So all the actions take place on that card. It gives you everything you need. I've mentioned building walls a couple of times. At the very top of your board here, you have these little indented spots where you can build walls. The price is listed right on there. You have to discard a card matching that color based off of the middle there. So it's going to build out from the middle of your tower, and you can add on. So, for instance, if we discarded an orange card, we paid one coin. We had to place one of our towers there. The next time we wanted to build, we would either need to use a brown or a purple because of our next spots available in the row. If you want to build a park or a zoo, remember all you have to do is place it down there, paying the price. If you wanted to build any other kind of building first, you need to discard a meeple matching the color of the card. So in this case, we have to discard a brown meeple to place that down. And then later on, if we wanted to build a building on top of it, we'd have to simply just put it on top of that, paying the price on the card. There's a ton of different ways to gain points in this game. It's going to last eight rounds. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins the game. I really liked how the dice worked in this game and how you kind of wanted everything, right? Like you, you want high numbers. You want high numbers and low. low numbers. And if you play with some of the expansions, you also want medium numbers. <laughs> you just want all the numbers. Like you want the high numbers because you want to be able to sell cards for money, but you don't want the high numbers because then, you know, bad things happen to you. That's when the like chaos happens. And what's it called? Do you remember? Calamities. Calamities. That's when the calamities happen. But you also want the low numbers because then it's cheaper for you to go up on the track. But then sometimes you have a lot of money and you want higher ones and twos. So that way <laughs> they can't go up on the track. And then when you play with the expansion, you went those medium numbers so you can play the ship tiles and ah i just loved it i love how you wanted all of it it wasn't like it wasn't like it was good or bad like i mean obviously the destruction and the calamities those are bad but overall it wasn't like a single pip was good or bad so i just really liked how dice was implemented in this game yeah bethany you mentioned uh, you know some of the expansions uh Queen Games tends to do that, right? They make those expansions for other games, those little mini expansions, those queenies. Uh, this one, our box came with six of them, which is fantastic. It's a lot to explore. Uh, it, you know, the base game by itself, you can play it over and over and over again and not get sick of it. But at the same time, if you kind of want to round it out and fully flesh it out and kind of, again, differentiate it a little bit more from Bruges, adding in these uh, these six expansions, these six little kind of mini expansions, spices it up quite a bit. So we, that's what we would recommend is kind of play a couple times without those yeah. and then add them in slowly. And then once you have them all under your belt, then throw them all in, you know, makes it a really fun experience, a lot more, uh, just a lot more interaction, a lot more things yeah. going on. Yeah. Um, there are so many cards in this game, like just like so many cards in this game and you cannot be married to your cards. You're cycling through those. You are getting rid of them to get money. You are getting rid of them to build buildings. You are just getting rid of them to build walls. You are just going through these cards like crazy. So you're cycling through 
all of these things. And so you can't just like, you. there are ways that you can get, like you can get a strategy, you can go digging for stuff. But besides that, you're just kind of going in and out, in and out, in and out. And you just really can't be like, I need this one card because you know what, you might not. You might just need a different card that's coming your way. And it was, um, it was like a little stressful with that, but it was also really fun to be able to go through all your cards like that and experience all of that. And there's so many, there's just so many cards. I mean, it's a great decision point. You know, you have to, you know, down to your last two cards, and you don't have enough money to build either one of them. But which one are you going to keep back? Which one are you going to use yeah. to to get more meeples or whatever the case is? It's a, it's a tricky one. All right, so I would say this is an excellent weight of a game as far as the complexity of it and the length of time and that kind of thing. Um, this goes back to like let's say you know Castles of Burgundy, which was fantastic kind of that middleweight style game. You know, it doesn't have nearly the the, the teeth or the uh, uh, the the heavierness to it that like something like Bora Bora or Aquasphere has, but at the same time it's not as, as light as like Cocopelli or La Isla. So yeah. for me, this has that great Stefan Weld Stefan Feld weight that just makes me feel right at home. You know, this is a, a a very a very smooth game. Everything about it is just it's just smooth. It just kind of just rolls. Yeah. The first time through might take a little. You have to reference those you know those turn order cards quite a bit, but after you have that down, yeah. man, it just moves. It's pretty quick. Um, so like I mentioned before, there's a lot of cards on in here and there's a lot of text on the cards. And so because all the cards are just a little bit different, some of them repeat themselves and they're like, they'll do an action with this meeple and this card does that same action but with a different color meeple. So some of them are really similar, but overall there's just a ton of cards. Um, so that can be bogged down a little bit but they have a, a separate book that just has all the cards listed in it. And it's actually really nice, especially when you're playing with multiple players, because but while they're taking their turn, you can just take that book, reference your card real quick, and then by the time you're good to go, you, you understand what you're doing. So I just thought that that was a really nice thing that they did, that with all those different cards, they weren't just expecting you to understand the iconography. They were like, no, we're going to give you this, because it's like, how many, like 200 cards that you were- oh, Way more than 200, yeah. Then you're referencing, and so they're all numbered in there, so you can just look it up in the book, and every time we've played, even when you understand all the iconography, every time we've played, we just have that on the table, so people can just like grab it and look things up in between their turns. You guys, if you are a Feld fan, I think you're gonna love this game. This is, this is a quintessential Feld-style game, you know, obviously based off of Bruges, an even, you know, super quintessential Feld <laughs> game. So if you liked Bruges, I think you're gonna love Hamburg, I think you're going to love the upgrades to it. Uh, if you're just looking for, you know, a good middleweight um, Euro-style game, I think you should yeah. check out Hamburg. Um, we've been playing the heck out of it lately, and I'm loving it. I really enjoyed this one. It, we had a lot of fun. We brought it to a lot of places recently and have gotten a lot of plays of it, and it's just been a blast, and it's been received really well really well. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. Yes, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.